Hi, I'm Kira Stripner, and today I'm here to haul all of these books. I'm really excited to talk about them. I went to a thrift store and the books are already three twenty-nine, and then they were cut in half and I was very, very excited. But I will start with two books that my friend Shani gave me. I really appreciate that she goes to free little libraries and when she finds classic books, she always shows up and goes, do you want these? She's giving me the sonnets and then she also gave me these two, which this is the complete Eurydice and it has a ton of his plays in there and I'm very bad at pronouncing Greek words, so I'm not gonna do that. And then we have The Greek Tragedies Volume 1, and this also has some lovely authors in it as well. And yeah, I'm really excited for both of these. I feel like I might be finally brave enough to read some more Greek plays. I like plays a lot and I find them really fascinating. I read Opidius Rex very early in my channel and I didn't get much from it. I read Medea two years ago and really loved it. So I feel like these are a good reason to kind of dive into some of these so yeah, if you have a favorite Greek play that's not one of the ones that I mentioned, I would love to hear them. The next seven books are all books that I bought in one day at two different thrift stores. The first book that I'm really excited to talk about is Mouse. And this is a book that is very well talked about and it is a book that has been banned for nudity, which is absurd because they're mice. This book was published in 1980 and Art is the son of a survivor of the Holocaust and he tells his father's story. This is a book that I wanted to read for a really long time. I read graphic novels and I read graphic memoirs a lot. I have been very intimidated. I think mostly because of how dark it is. Like, this is not my kind of art that I always love. Also, obviously, a really hard topic. There's a part one and a part two. This is only part one. So I will hopefully read this and I'll get the second part for the library and finish it. And yeah, I know that this is a really well-loved book and I am really excited to experience it. The next book that I want to talk about is Rapture by Carol Ann Duffy. She's a very renowned poet that I've heard many great things about. And when I saw this and I saw this cover, I was like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, I just opened the beginning of it and read some and I really liked it. So I was like, yeah, I will read this. And the beginning of it is called You. Uninvited, the thought of you stayed too late in my head. So I went to bed, dreaming you hard, hard, woke with your name like tears, soft salt on my lips. The sound of bright syllables like a charm, like a spell. Falling in love is glamorous hell. The crouched, parched heart like a tiger ready to kill. Like... It's just really beautiful. I'm really excited to read more of her poems. I have been really enjoying reading poetry in the month of March, and I'm sure that this is going to continue that story. The next book goes out to our darling, Carol Shields, and we know her from the prize, the Carol Shields Prize, because she was a woman who both championed American and Canadian literature. And I own some of her collected stories, and I have not wanted to buy too many of her books without ever reading her, but when I read the back of it, I was like, okay, I have to, because it says, Swan tells the story of four individuals whose lives become entwined in the life of Mary Swan, a rural Canadian poet whose authentic and unique voice is discovered only hours before her violent death. Mysteriously, all traces of Swan's existence, her notebooks, her first drafts of her work, even her photograph, gradually vanish as the characters in this engrossing novel become caught up in their own concepts of who Mary Swan was. I don't think you could pick a book that sounds more like my cup of tea. Like the fact that it's, you know, finding this poet that is almost lost and becoming obsessed almost their idea of who she is overtaking the narrative like oh my goodness I, I cannot say a book that is more like me the next two books go together and the first one is flamecaster by cinda williams chima and the next one is shadowcaster by cinda williams chima she wrote one of my favorite series it is called the demon king i really really love it i read it before booktube so i don't talk about it as much and i need to reread it because it's been so long i read this book at the end of 2018 and i have a review on my channel talking about it and talking about all the things that i love about it because i really love this book and i meant to continue but i didn't own them i had originally read this from the library so i just never got around to it and yeah i am really excited to continue on i don't know if i'll reread i kind of want to reread the original i think she's a classic ya fantasy novelist that just doesn't get enough recognition like her books are really good and amazing and they hold the test of time at least from my own experience so yes if you are in the mood for that i really recommend the demon king series and then another book that i've read before is ella enchanted I really love this book when I read it in 2019. I grew up with the movie. The movie and the book are quite different in many ways, but this book is really precious and I really, really enjoyed this. It's a retelling of Cinderella and in this, rather than her just being kind and gentle and obedient, she is cursed with obedience and she has to obey anyone who gives her a command and it makes her life with her stepmother and her stepsisters very hard. It's a really powerful novel that really explores not having free choice or the ability to make your own decisions and I think that it's really great. So yeah, if you haven't read this, I really recommend it. It's not that long. It's wonderful. And then last but certainly not least, we have gothic short stories. I am a big fan of gothicness and of short stories and I think that it might be hard to see this cover but I love that there's just a skull and a candle half cut off. Like, 
Can you ask for a more appropriately themed cover? These are not everyone's favorite kind of classics, but I think that they're beautiful. Like they're some of my favorite to annotate because I really find that they have wide margins and I can write in them, which is really fun. I'm definitely gonna keep this until Victober. It is not all Victorian like I thought it is, but it does have a lot of Victorian books in it. It is a lot of authors that I'm not familiar with at all. So I think that that will be really interesting. But some of them that I've already read, like Gaskell's is the old nurse's story and we have the yellow wallpaper and we have Edgar Allan Poe in here, but we also have some more surprising books as well. So yeah, I love some gothic short stories and I love finding these books. I really love the catered experience of thrift hauling because I don't really have a choice of the books that I buy or what kind of books I want to read. Like obviously I don't pick up every book, but my options are limited by the scope that is in the store. In one of my recent book haul revisits, I was asked how I keep from buying all of the books and how I keep from buying new books. And like part of it is, you know, books are expensive. I don't have $25 to spend. I bought all of these seven books for $12 and that was great. And that is why I bought so many. Normally I only buy like three or four a month or three or four a store. <laughs> And yeah, I, you know, spend $10 and then I don't spend $10 for another month. And it's, it's really helpful to be able to do that. But I also think that it's really beautiful because I think that allows me to buy books that I wouldn't buy for full price and to just explore and also not to have such stress around my books. I think because people spend so much money on books, they might feel more pressured to read them consistently. And I have many, many books on the shelves that I haven't read and that I may never read, but other people will read or I just enjoy, you know, a story about Carol Shields writing about Swan. If I never read this book, I will be intrigued by it. And I, I really hope I read it, you know, eventually. And I'm, I know that my moods change and things adapt over time and stuff like that. And I really do believe that I will read the majority of my books, you know, but if I never do, I spent one fourth of a Starbucks drink on it. So, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely worth it. I get the choice and the experience and the joy of having all these books that I would never like look for or find or give the time of day in a traditional bookstore. And I just love it so much. And I just love that it's also inexpensive and, you know, you're retelling stories. Like some of these, you know, are annotated by people who, you know, wrote it originally in 1989 or like 2005. And we just see the history in that too. I know some people want pristine covers with nothing. I love, I have some Romeo and Juliet covers where it's just like so underlined and I have no idea who these people were, but they made so many notations on this book. And I love that history. I would love to hear your thoughts on what books you bought in March, any ones you're most intrigued about. Do you have a full library full or do you have a tight TBR? Do your thrift store because I think that if you don't thrift store, like you really, really should. And don't do Value Village because they're not a real charity and their books are way more expensive than any other thrift store. Like you can go, like there's like at least like five or six different brands of thrift stores in my area and Value Village is more than double the price of everything else. And I'm just like, eh, no. So do that and don't do Value Village is my advice. <laughs> And I hope you have a great day and I will see you next time.